<sighs> We're finally here. Performing for you. <laughs> if you note the words, you can join in too. X gonna give it to you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many people know what line I was quoting and from where it comes from? If you do, congratulations, you played the original game. <laughs> so, uh, this was a mistake on my part, but I left it in. I meant to change the music back to uh, to the remake soundtrack for the duration of the playthrough, but it was still set to, to the classic soundtrack for the title screen. <laughs> um, so, we got the Resident Evil 2, which only happens when you got the... Yeah... Yeah, you, you only get it when you get the classic DLC. Guys. It's like so weird. <laughs> do they just yeah. not have anything? Oh, they do, they have like atmospheric music in the title screen. Yeah. So, but, but you know. the, yeah, but you don't get you don't get a title shout. You don't get a title shout. Yeah. Once you hit start. But you know they yeah. recorded a new title shout for it. It's not the the grainy ass uh, PS One voice audio that's playing. No, they they recorded a new title shout for the game. You know, it just only happens when you fans are gonna love this. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> Lock up behind a paywall. What? <laughs> like, no. Ah, uh, that's the Capcom we know and love. love? Question? I'm <laughs> I'm willing to take a little bit of paid nonsense if it means we get quality games like this DMC five back yeah. again. And to be fair, um, yeah. with both DMC five and Resi two, they have put the, they have made the coolest stuff free. Bloody Palace is just a free patch update. Uh, Ghost Ghost Survivors was a free patch update. You're not going to see that here because I recorded this before that came out. Um, but Ghost Survivors is a legitimately fun additional mode too. Also, when you beat the game on normal, you get to choose which version of the uh, normal outfit you wear at whatever time. And when you beat the game on on hardcore mode, you get to choose which version of the um, of the classic outfits that you, that you're wearing at any given time. And it's adorable because Leon's live action ass cosplay outfit is still bandaged on the outside in its injured version. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> If you get the deluxe edition of the game, though, you have pretty much all that from the start. So, fun worldwide statistic time. Character choice for your first playthrough is 80% Leon and 20% Claire worldwide. That's 20% of people worldwide who remember that Claire A and Leon B is the canon <laughs> way to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I feel like it, it, it's it's to be expected that Leon is the first one you pick because a lot of people are going to default to whatever the first thing a game highlights is. Oh, these glorious burger physics. Also, more <laughs> also more people know who Leon is than Claire. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, seriously, the detail on this fucking sandwich, <laughs> it's like, it's... I want to eat a sandwich now every time I look at this. Well, you know, this 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 is kind of it's, it's a trucker burger. The trucker burger here has 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 two really opposite extreme effects depending on who you are. It either completely disgusts you or makes you hungry depending on you. Well, it's a complete it's a disgusting <laughs> burger, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't want to eat it. You know, like sometimes you want that kind of gross fast food barely holding together greasy ass burger you know i mean we we open this up on like frickin triple x quality food porn here but you know <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you see i get hungry more than grossed out because you know it's not like the trucker is a is a slob you know he gets a little catch up on his lips he licks it off he's not a know? slob he's in fact he's like the most like lovingly rendered video game trucker ever made he's even got the shadows <laughs> under his eyes from lack of sleep you see I mean, it's dark, so it's hard to see, but they, they, they have those shadows under his eyes. We don't get the maniac line, though, in this. Uh, yeah. in this Driving like a maniac. Well, pretty much none of the dialogue from the original game, except Get Down, is, 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 uh, yeah. is, 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 is returned over. They, they rewrote things pretty extensively. Uh, for the better, I would say. It's, it's, it's a more serious take on a B-movie story, but it, that, that, it allows really to, well. that allows you to... That allows you to... Yeah, you can immerse yourself in the story in, to a more serious degree while still enjoying the B-movie cheese. Uh, it it's yeah. great. I mean, there's still a degree of cheese here, but the, this story is, for the most part, played straight, like as a horror. Yeah, film. and that makes the and yeah. that makes the cheesy gung ho moments all feel a little bit more earned in their way. Well, it it, it helps that Leon is a massive dork. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although of the two characters, I would say Claire here uh, came out looking a little better than Leon because it comes down to the voice actors. They both have new voice actors uh, from. People. Yeah, Leon's is a bit stiff. Leon's is a bit stiff. Yeah, that's that's the problem I have with him. Claire, on the other hand, has like way more emotional range than even Alice 
Harrison Court had. Uh, so, you know, I, I feel like it fits this style better than Alison Court's portrayal usually uh, would have done, unless she seriously upped, up, uh, upped her game on that, too. But I guess we'll never know, because they didn't, they didn't tap her for this game. So, uh, oh well. Now, you were going into, like, how a majority of players will start with Leon yeah. first and Claire second because they don't know that Claire A, Leon B is the canonical scenario. But That doesn't uh, as matter for this did, version. As, yeah, I was going to say, as someone who didn't do Leon A, Claire B, is there much of a difference now as there was no, in the not, PS1 not, game? No, not in this That version. is the one disappointing aspect of this game. And, you know, if there was going to be one corner cut, I would prefer it to be this one rather than in the gameplay. But the Claire story and the Leon story are mostly unchanged between A and B. The only real differences are the A scenario character is the one who meets Marvin and has different interactions with him depending on who it is. And in and then there are scenes with Claire and Leon talking to each other that change depending on who's on which side of the fence or whatever. Yeah. But for the most part uh, the A and B scenarios are mostly the same. Leon is always going to be fighting Mr. X at the end, and Claire yeah. is always going to be fighting Birkin at the end. They did this weird thing where they swapped what they were actually doing in the A and B scenarios in the original, so the one who fights the A scenario boss is the one who's getting the train going, and the one who fights the B scenario boss is the one who's on the lift uh, running for the train, which was amusing. Like <laughs> B scenario also completely skips the gas station sequence. Like You don't play this Section at all in B scenario. No, B has its own mini area like this, but it's on the outside of the police station. Um, well, it's technically in the police station, but it's kind of like in the weird courtyard thing in front of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah the side yard where you would fight Brad in the original. Yeah, game they moved that to the B scenario. So the weird. <laughs> uh, but like, oh, those hamburger physics trailer, at, at trailer work. reveal. The, the, ham the hamburger <laughs> physics were 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 used for more than one thing. That's that's a Gross. Yeah. It's great. Uh, <laughs> He's got the same breakfast sandwich in his mouth. <laughs> no, this was this was such a pleasant reveal last year. Yeah. I'm also surprised that it came out yeah. within like a year of its re reveal. Too. Oh no no no! That's the thing though. We've no we've known about remake two for years. It was a matter of was, were they was, actually making it or not? Yeah, it was quietly announced years ago. Uh, and that got people excited, but we didn't know much about but it. We until didn't. Recently, we, yeah. we didn't know anything about it until last year when it was finally revealed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then yeah, to be released the year after that, I think it is really commendable. It was really, and, it was really more like six years, six months. I mean, really. just to just to really jump the gun here, I love this game. Like, this is a fantastic is a game. remake of Resident Evil Two. What is it with Re what is it with Resident Evil and having fantastic remakes? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, they they. They put a lot of work into it, and they also, like, I don't know, it's like, they're really intent on advancing the formula every time they do it. And I say every time, it's only happened twice, but when, when, they, when, when, they, do <laughs> a, every time. when they do a remake, they take the opportunity to see how far they can push that that original game's design within the new framework of the, uh, of the modern design that they're working with. So... You, what you get is not just a leap forward for the original game, but a leap forward for the series as it stands. And that's especially visible here, as opposed to the first remake, because uh, we're in such a radically different gameplay style from uh, from the original game. But yeah, they like, dropped the traditional classic Resident Evil style after Remake 1. As far as I can tell. Yeah, Remake yeah, 1 and Remake 0 were the last classic style games. And uh, for that reason, Remake 1 is kind of the pinnacle of that style. And, you know, I would still argue that there's not much further they could have pushed that without... Um, which, you know, might be why they were fiddling with weird stuff like over-the-shoulder aiming in the Resi 4 um, prototypes. But, you know, uh, I don't think there's much further they could have pushed that style. Um... And, you know, that was that was my main argument for this over-the-shoulder perspective. But even setting that aside, what we're looking at here is essentially Resident Evil 7, but... It was a prototype for this, effectively. Way better, yeah. I mean, yeah. we'll get to it when we get to the police station. I'll talk about the structure differences there, and that's the key differences, but... This opening is great, because, like, it's suspenseful, it's short... As tutorials go, it's probably like one of the most concise ones, and it 
it's it's a, an excellent segue into one of the things that makes this game far superior to Seven for replay value specifically. Oh yeah, because I remember you were talking about the play. The, the intro was only good the first time you played it. Was yeah, I went on for ages about how long that intro was and how much how hard it was to get back into the game on second playthroughs. In this game, you get a short sequence in the A scenario for this gas station tutorial segment. It they they edit past it effectively in the B scenario, so you don't even have to deal with it there. And then you're at the police station and you're in the thick of the Resident Evil gameplay formula, and it's it's, it's glorious. And the cutscenes don't overstay the welcome either. They're very well written, well produced, but they don't on. go on too long. Can you skip them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Okay. And that's that's another thing because you couldn't skip the cutscene segments in seven <laughs> because you know immersive first person experience and all that. Uh, it's a little easier to to get people to buy a to to get people to you know. Um, uh, like the idea of a skip cutscene button when you're in third person and cutscene mode is definitely cutscene mode. You know, it's, um... Man, Claire sounds so much like a college girl in this game. Well, I don't... She is, so. I know, it's just, you know, she never used to. She sounded very badass from the start, no matter what she was saying or how mundane. Uh, which is part of why I say that this portrayal of her is, sounds more... Uh, human and relatable than Allison Quartz, and I love Allison Quartz. Uh, Claire Redfield, don't get me wrong; it's just a different feel than this, and I think this feel works very well for this style of game. Also, really cool television style intro here. You know, it's like I mean, they, I think they made this entirely for the trailer reveal, and they're like, you know, we can use this as you, you know, an intro to the game. Let's it, do that. It feels like we just watched the first five minutes of the Resident Evil Netflix show that they're apparently doing. <laughs> you we'll know. see how that turns out. So, oh, I mean, huh. Castlevania turned out way better than I had any right to expect, so, you know. If, you know, <laughs> if, they, if they take notes from 7 and 2's remake, as far as tone is concerned, it should be good. Just don't do another... Don't make another garbage mess like the, the, li the live-action movies. Okay? That's just... No, please. I don't. I. I can't. Well, uh, I can't deal with that again. <laughs> one thing I, I want well, to go back to something uh, from earlier. You feel that remake one was kind of like the pinnacle of classic Resident Evil design in terms of how it was set up, yeah. and camera style. When remake two was making its rounds, were you expecting it to be like the classic camera style, or, or did you think it was going to go RE four? I wasn't expecting it, but a part of that is because I was expecting something along the lines of an evolution of seven because that's more or less capcom's track record with resident evil remakes they didn't make Re remake one classic style they made it what was at the time modern style so yeah um the other thing though is that i personally actually wanted the over the shoulder camera because i wanted to see how far they could push the style while still keeping it survival horror and yeah, because I think that's kind of the challenge that Capcom has been struggling with since... I don't want to say 4, because they were clearly doing something different with 4, and they weren't worried about trying to emulate the, well, the style Well, the 4 we got, the, anyway. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. But, yeah. like, the finished product, I think, at the end of the day, they just stopped caring about emulating the style of horror that RE 1, 2, and 3 relished in. Uh, but by... The end of 5 and 6, especially, they were trying to replicate it, but struggled, clearly. And I agree that it, I would have liked it more to be over the shoulder because it would really test their grounds on how can you compromise both design choices. Have the over the shoulder camera that put Resident Evil, I mean, let's face it, on the mainstream map because it was so successful. But also give old time fans the horrors that they really enjoyed the classic Resident Evil games for. Another detail that re that's retained from the A-B scenarios of the original game is that the car crashes in different directions depending on who you're starting as. So it, uh, it'll crash with its back to the wreckage or its front to the wreckage depending on which character is starting on which side. Ooh. Mm. Ouch. Just a mild concussion. <laughs> Check it and, off. and ear damage. Yeah. Like, they, like, both Leon and Claire should be fucking death after that. Yeah. yeah. Although, like... Claire! Why? On the subject of that, 
you don't get your ammo or anything back after the, tu the tutorial section, but you do get a free full heal after the tutorial section if you really buggered up that part and got chomped on by zombies before escaping. So you don't have to worry about taking damage in the gas station. I just found that interesting. So you, wait, you spawn from that, from that get crash with full health? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, it, it, that's just a gameplay story segregation thing. Now, in well, the, you know, it would be a point where it'd be like, okay, you start at half health. Here's your herb. This is what herbs do. They heal you. <laughs> now at full health. You're not, you, okay, you're not wrong there. In so. the original game, you'd run through the street and go through the gun shop and then go through, like, a narrow maze of alleys and a bus and all of that to get to the police station. They moved that segment to later on and made it a Claire only. Oh, look. There's, like, T... F P. I don't know. Is that an intentional PT reference? It looks like it could be. Almost there. No idea. <laughs> uh, I just thought that was that was interesting graffiti. But uh, yeah. Oh, there is a bus out here. When playing this for the first time, though, like I had still all the classic mentality playing it. I was like, okay, does Brad show up in this game <laughs> if I get Sad, the police sadly, station without no. picking up no. anything? And the answer is no. They put a little Easter egg poster reference to him down there, but they're yeah. uh, if, if they're. Um, if they're planning or planning for the eventuality of a Resi 3 remake, there seem to be certain choices they made in the design of this game that seem to leave the possibility intentionally open. Like not, inten like not bringing Brad in so that they don't necessarily have to have Brad die at the police station if they get there. They could have that scene take place somewhere else if, if it works better for the game. I am really excited for a Resident Evil 3 remake basically in the cell because they can reuse so much stuff to speed that along. Well, yeah, like that was that was the case in the original game too. They literally re reused half the police station for part of the game. <laughs> yeah. so but do, uh do 2 and 3 take place at the same time? Uh Short 3 time? is 3 is very shortly after 2. It, it, it's it's actually book it actually bookends 2. It starts out before 2 and then you go on yeah. you go unconscious with a virus for a little while and then after after Carlos heals you you wake up and it's after 2. So, yeah. Yeah, Res Remake 2, take, I mean, Resident Evil 2 takes place over the course of, like, what, two, three hours? Yeah. But he he here's the thing. There are certain holes that are broken through walls in here that some fans have speculated were um, holes that were broken through walls while Nemesis was tearing through the building. Wouldn't that be interesting? Well, quite, quite possible, yeah. And if yeah. they were remaking the game anyway, they could do whatever the hell they wanted with the timeline. So, you know. <laughs> well, if if not a one to one recreation, then definitely a, a similar reinterpretation. They also made a point to leave a f a file somewhere in the game. Uh, I think it was in the Star's office that has Chris giving Jill a coded message to let Claire know that he's okay if she happens to try and get in contact, which is the first time that we've actually had an in-game excuse for Jill to still be in fucking Raccoon City when Resident Evil 3 happens. So, yeah. I mean, there was this whole backstory that was supposed to be told at the beginning of Resident Evil 3 to explain that, but they cut it out for some reason. I don't get it. Huh. <laughs> So, uh, this map system, the, the, the map system is great. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh no, the map system is like one of the best parts of the game. So, yeah. is having the game being set in a police station supposed to be a subtle jab at everybody who watches a horror movie and be like, Dur, why don't they just call the police? Um, someone actually does, no. does actually, okay, uh, this is jumping way ahead, but when Sherry is talking to her mom over a video camera in the sewers, uh, Sherry's mom is like, why didn't you call the police? That's what we taught you. And I just wanted to shout at the screen, the police station was overrun with zombies, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was going to say two words, Brian Irons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian Irons gets a lot more screen time in this game, too. Is that He's also made Irons way creepier. Younger brother? No. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. And you know, you know, I told you before you started playing that that Brian Irons was 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 made more of um was more, made more of an element. And your answer was, how do you do that? <laughs> because he was such a non. Yeah, because he was already fucking. Well, not even that. It was like, I mean, Brian Irons in the original was always a monster. He, he, he was, was creepy, creepy, but he was, but like, he was, he was also he was, a monster. he was also like a non-entity within the game. He appeared for like two scenes and then got killed. Yeah. So it was like he he was conceptually scary, but also didn't do yeah. much. Well, like well, I mean, but the the classic game also I did 
I think did pretty well using environmental storytelling for Brian Irons because you got the files that explained like his mentality on how to handle the outbreak and how he deliberately made it harder for his officers to escape the station. He also had a taxidermy dungeon. Yeah, he yeah he, he also had a well oh, because he's he's under umbrellas. Uh, oh, okay. He's an umbrella. He's a, yeah, he's yeah. Umbrella. Um, yeah. One thing I do appreciate yeah. about this remake more so than even the original is that while they have the same excuse of you know it's a police it's a museum turned into a police station it's not quite as obscene about this place is designed really stupidly yeah yeah there's actual bathrooms there. yeah well the one well besides that there's also you know it's basically two halves with a center point yeah it's uh, not a it's not a weird series of corridors that don't make any sense as to why you would build it for other that other than funneling people through for a museum. Here's here's the thing though, the layout of the police station is more or less the same, apart from the main hall not needing a freaking emergency ladder to get to the goddamn second floor because I was stupid. Thank God. Um, yeah. <laughs> the um, <laughs> but uh, the layout is the same. What they've done to restructure the place is put up barricades where barricades didn't previously exist. Yeah, so it's not as stupid about how the place feels like it should be. It, it's it's more it's more free form than the original game. The original game had more of a linear progression than this than this version does. Uh, com- so the so the layout is mostly the same, but they changed the details. To- they cha- they changed the details. They also made they also made the police station a bit larger and added a few rooms for logical consistency stake. For example, the original game's police station did not have a bathroom. <laughs> Even though the, the mansion had a bathroom. Not at all. I'm pretty sure the guardhouse had several of them in the first game, just, I mean. Just don't look in the potted plants. Yeah. They got it right in the first game, but they missed bathrooms in the second game. I'm like, okay, sure, why not? There is something I don't like, though, in terms of the different scenarios in the remake. Uh, more specifically, if you bought the deluxe edition of the game, because you know, when you buy the deluxe edition of the game, you get the um, you get the the Jill, the the Wesker, and the I think the Chris models of the the Samurai Edge or some other yeah. shit, and they use standard eight mil- uh, nine millimeter bullets. In B scenario, you get an entirely different gun that uses completely separate ammo. Oh yeah, which kind of shoots the whole thing in the face. Y- y- like, y- yeah, it's... that's. I'll get to that when we get to Leon because I actually do wind up using his nine millimeter gun quite a lot in the B scenario, but um, yeah, because his nine millimeter gun, when fully upgraded, kicks a lot of ass. It really does. I, I yeah. think it's. I think it's them trying to make the B scenario, which you only unlock after beating the game at least once, at least a little bit harder by making you manage two separate guns compared to just the one. Yeah, they, and, and you know, to be fair, that you can do that a lot more easily in this game than you could have, say, in the uh, in the, um, in the the original game, because you have a generally larger inventory. Even in, even in hardcore mode where you have less inventory upgrades, you still have a larger right. inventory than you would in the classic games. And, and, it, and it is, it's not impossible to get nine, standard 9mm rounds you, you, in B scenario. You just have to craft it. You have to craft it. Yeah, it's you have the to only way to obtain nine millimeters. I think the implication was that like the A character was taking all the nine millimeters, and the B character was taking all the high caliber <laughs> handgun rounds. Hey, Claire, come on! <laughs> but uh, yeah, there, there are some odd places where it looks like they had plans to have more differences between A and B scenarios, but they cut the idea out early in development and just left vestiges of yeah. it in. So. Um, it's weird, but it, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, I I, I agree to a point because they still try. Now, you to see, that, that barricade right in front of the bathrooms is one of the ones that they added that I was talking about. Because in the original game, you could just proceed from this point all the way to the press room. Um, and you would, you would enter the press room from the other side. You can get into the press room through these double doors that are standing where our weird arcane puzzle used to be. But, um... You, 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 your only entry point to the press room in the original game was the door at the back of the press room that you could enter from. And when you get down there, the door is still boarded up, but there's a zombie banging on it to draw attention to it. It's like, hey, dumbass, this is where you used to enter this room. <laughs> now you can't. <laughs> but Mr. X will still break down the same wall to get at you. It's just a random event now, depending no on... No need to shout in all caps, sir. <laughs> The best thing about the B scenario, though, is that this guy comes back as a zombie. <laughs> as ha- as yeah, ha- as half a zombie. Yeah, half a zombie. Oh, well, half a zombie or an entire zombie, depending on what so you're wait, playing the Japanese. So wait, is that like half of his body is zombified, or 
He yeah, still wants um, to eat your brain, but is just polite about it. It's like, sorry, can I eat your brain? Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> half, it's half. half of his zombie is it, half of his body is zombified. Although I've watched the Japanese version, thanks Kazuna Ai, and um, in the Japanese version they had to cut down a lot on the gore because it's it's I think it's a Buddhist thing. They don't like seeing the human body cut or modified in any way. So um, uh, he's just sort of mildly inconvenienced below the waist in the Japanese version. <laughs> so it's like. Uh, why can't I just spray you with some first aid spray and yeah. <laughs> put a bandaid on it? Pussy. Put a bandage on it. Yeah. Yeah, but it is really cool in the base scenario. He, he does become zombified and he crawls around the, and he can still hurt you. Like he can, <laughs> like, he'll crawl up around your body like a damn mountain. The map system is great, but there is one thing that you have to um, keep track of yourself, or at least make an effort to check, and that's um, the broken windows. They don't appear on the map. Unless you either board them up or or they're broken, t or go or go to the trouble of checking the window yourself, you have to check the window for it to appear on the map. Which is weird because all the other things on the map will just appear if you happen to see them. Like if you happen to get close enough to an item for the little item indicator to pop up on your screen, the item will appear on the map, so you know that there's an item there. Now you might ask, Lewis. Why are you wasting time with these zombies? Why are you luring them into this room so that they'll slowly pursue you around the desk and you can run past them? Because there's an, because there's items I want to pick up before I get locked out of this area. It's also a matter of if you lock them in here, they won't notice you in the hallway and thus won't chase you out of it. Yeah, that too. But the thing is, those zombies broke out of this room right here, which was boarded up a second ago. And now I only have to deal with this one zombie. Fat enemy. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, how do you guys feel over the fact that it does not matter where you shoot them? It doesn't matter at all. It does not like, matter where you shoot them for damage, but uh, it does. Yeah. It does matter for the purposes of Mobility. triggering triggering stuns and uh, t and taking out limbs so that they're less. If we're talking pure HP values, yeah, it does not matter where you shoot them. It does the same damage. The headshots no aren't more effective, although like uh, two headshots if will generally daze a zombie for a few seconds so that you can run past. Yes. So also, if you get an explosion headshot, that obviously just automatically kills them. Yeah, critical hits yes. to the head are also really useful. So if you are good at headshots, by all means, go for them. But it's generally a good idea to go for their legs more often than their head. Yeah. D-limbing is really important in this game, I especially for your first playthrough. You get all dead space in this. the limb you D-limb? This is the part where the Resident Evil 2 remake starts taking a lot of pages out of Resident Evil Outbreak's book for some reason. First, by extending Marvin Branagh's storyline significantly, because he was a major character in the police station chapters of those. And um, second... By having a secret passage underneath the statue in the lobby, which was a thing in Resident Evil Outbreak. So nobody knows what caused this? Another thing from Resident Evil Outbreak was using the train on the turntable as an escape route. So, yeah. Oh man, they're just welding all the plots together. <laughs> it's it's interesting because like there's no less than three ideas that I that I know of myself from Outbreak. There might be more. But, was there a novelization of two? A novelization of two, yeah. Uh, the novelizations yeah. continued all the way up into Code Veronica and Zero. Um, the the, the uh, interesting thing about the novelizations is that sometimes elements from the novels crept their way into the games later. Like Remake One had several files that were just copied verbatim from the book, um, like the itchy tasty thing. And um, in this one. The novel was the first instance of the police station having been something other than a police station before it became a police station, although the progression was a bit more logical in the novel. First it was a library, then it was City Hall, then it was a police station. Because City Hall got a got its own fancy building, so they just left the police this other building that they happened to have. Which makes sense, because the books kind of portrayed uh, Raccoon City as this rural-ass town that just happened to be having an economic boom because of Umbrella. So yeah, not Umbrella Corporation, creating so many jobs for the citizens. Oh yeah, so they just, you know... Quality of life. What a great, what a great group. They're just taking advantage of all those uh, perfectly legal, em legally employed people to fund their illegal bioweapons research. As a pharmaceutical company does. 
you know, you know, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an easy slope to slide down. Like at one point you're you're making headache medication, and then just the next day you find yourself making weapons of mass destruction. You know, it can happen to anybody. <laughs> That's one hell of excitement. Okay, so uh, I got I got a, an extra set of wooden boards because I went into that one room, which is good because it means that you have boards the first time that you encounter a window where a zombie is trying to break through at you, and you can just put the boards up and stop the zombie. Man, the guy who mopped that floor did a really bad dro job drying it. It is very wet. <laughs> now, in the A scenario, you just have all of the uh, all of so the combinations is. from the start. In the B scenario, this book is torn up, and you have to find several files scattered around to get the to get the combinations. Also, the combinations are different in the B scenario, but yeah, not just your way. Yeah, but not for the safes and locker combinations. Those are the nope. same in every playthrough. So if you're smart enough to write them down like I did, you can just get them the moment you run into them and just drop the items in your item box. The uh, safe that I opened earlier is kind of useless to get at this point in the game uh, as Claire, specifically, because it's always a handgun up upgrade, I think. So, um, but uh, it, it's it, 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 that locker, it ha that safe has an upgrade for the Browning High Power, um, which was her original starting gun, but she doesn't get it until, like, the parking lot later on in the game. So yeah, it, it's really beneficial to memorize those locker combinations, or just because, write you know, them that's, down. Yeah, yeah, because I think like one of them is inventory expansion. Like yeah. in, this early in the game is super. The helpful. one in the West Office, which is the only safe that was actually in the original game, is the inventory expansion. Um, yeah. Are all of the puzzles the same every time you play it? Um, as far as the main ones go, yeah. Yeah, every time you play the A scenario, uh, you get the A scenario puzzles. Every time you get the B scenario, you get the B scenario variants, which are the same puzzles with different solutions. Like, when you get to the chess pieces later on, there's a more complicated riddle for figuring out where the puzzle pieces go in the B scenario than there was in the A scenario. Um, also, I think this save box is not in B scenario. It's no, it's not. I, I that, that, that threw me off. There's zombies crawling around in this room. It's no longer a safe room. Because Mr. X tore the box down. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. X will still follow you into the uh, main hall, though, even in the A scenario. Just beating it up. It's like, oh, there's a crank in here. 